Matthew chapter 11, verses 28 to 30. <clears throat> Last Sunday, we started a series, picking up one word. Matthew chapter 11, verses 28 to 30. If we can have it on the screen, I will follow the version that is there. So this is the new King James Version. You are more than welcome to follow the version that you have. <clears throat> Come to me, all you labor, who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Hallelujah. Please be seated. God bless you. <clears throat> if you were here last Sunday evening, I introduced you to this beautiful word in the Bible of the many. <clears throat> If we have to choose one word which is encouraging, which is comforting, which gives us confidence, it is this word called come. The greatest invitation ever extended by anybody. <clears throat> and the one who is extending this invitation is none other than the one who created you and me. The one who gave his life for you and me, which is Lord Jesus Christ. Amazing. <clears throat> And I started this series last Sunday. And last Sunday morning in the Telugu service, we looked at come and see. <clears throat> when uh, John the Baptist had a huge following, a lot of disciples who were behind John the Baptist. But he kept on saying that I am not the one, there is somebody else who is going to come. I am just here to introduce you to that Messiah the Lamb of God, <clears throat> who takes away the sins of mankind. And when Jesus entered the scene, John the Baptist was so humble, he just pointed everybody towards him. What an example to these days, these day Christians or preachers or teachers like me. Many a time, we want to focus on ourselves, which is so sad. It's all about him. And then these disciples just go behind Jesus. And Jesus looks back. I'm glad he turned. And he always will turn towards people who are seeking him. There's one beautiful quality of him. And he asks, what do you want? Or what do you seek? He didn't ask, whom do you seek? Because he knew they were still not seeking him. <clears throat> and all that they say is, we want to know where you are residing. Probably they thought he was in some gated community with good infrastructure, clubhouse, not really. <coughs> they go along, and the beauty is, we know Jesus never stayed in any fancy house. He didn't have a place of his own. But when they went and saw and stayed, that was last Sunday in the morning, <coughs> they were changed people. They came back the next day, and they took others along. Andrew went to his brother Simon, and he said, we have found the Messiah. Amazing. I said, if there is one thing that you need to take away from that message, come and see. When you see Jesus for who he is, and when you stay with him each day, when you spend time with him each day, you and I are bound to change. And that experience, you will, we will invariably share. That is what happens when we keep learning. <clears throat> and that was one takeaway of the many. <clears throat> so that was come and see. And last Sunday evening in the English service, we looked at come and follow. You remember? Yes, no, maybe. If not the whole message, just remember that word follow. <laughs> follow him for who he is. It says come and follow. <clears throat> and we, we looked at that context. You know, they were fishermen. They were, they were busy what they were doing. <clears throat> And God wants busy people, by the way. If you're busy doing something, he'll say, come, I want you. If you're just sitting and doing nothing, he'll say, okay, continue. <laughs> he wants busy people. Saul, before he became Paul, was busy. Busy thinking that he was doing the right thing. He was so proud that he was the best among the Pharisees. He was uh, <clears throat> going about fulfilling the law to the very letter, as they say. 
There's so much of pride, so he felt that, you know, this Jesus should not be there. So he was working against everybody who was in that way, that way which Jesus has shown. And we know that great transformation that took place on the road of Damascus. Saul was busy, but then Jesus met him on that road and he became Paul and became even more busy for God. And he had the privilege of writing the maximum books in the New Testament, not even a disciple. He was the one who was against, but God transformed him. The power of Christ, the power of the cross, the power of this triune God. So the challenge was that will you follow? <clears throat> when God intervenes in what we are doing and he says, I want you to follow, will you follow? And the only way to follow him we saw that we need to take up that cross and follow him. If Jesus, has, if Jesus had told, come and follow me, I'll give you a crown, I'm sure a lot of people would have come running. Who doesn't want to keep a crown? Crown is fancy. You know, we take pride. But cross is shame. It is not that fancy cross here with gold or silver or platinum that a lot of people would like to wear. A lot of rock bands wear not one cross, half a dozen crosses, big ones. Small, short, medium, extra large. Right? I mean, they don't even realize the significance of that cross, the sanctity of that symbol. Because Jesus took upon the sin of mankind and that was nailed on that cross. So cross means suffering, cross means shame, cross means death. That is what cross is. The initial years of my walk with God, probably I preached as well, but it took a long time for me to really preach. But I heard people say that any problem that we have in our life is a cross. Not really. And they went, to, went on to the extent of telling, if you have a tough mother-in-law, then she's the biggest cross in your life. <laughs> so mother-in-laws and father-in-laws and the bosses at work became crosses. <laughs> that is not true. Let us not cross. <clears throat> Let us not belittle this greatest symbol of sacrifice. And today morning in the Telugu service, I took another message. That was, come and drink which is in John chapter 7. You don't have to look it up. Amazing chapter where Jesus is taking part in the feast of the tabernacles of the many feasts that they had. This feast was important. It was a week-long celebration and pretty much all Jews are there in Jerusalem when Jesus enters the scene and he keeps teaching them in the middle of, of uh, that feast. And then on the last day, it says, John 7, 37, don't have to look it up. He stands up and I said, Jesus, not, Jesus just doesn't stand, but he stands out. Do you agree? Jesus always stands out. You place him anywhere. You place him among any gurus, among any gods, whatever. He will stand out. There is no doubt. There is no doubt whatsoever. Because there is Something so very unique that doesn't exist in anybody else. The question we dealt in the morning is, is he standing out in your life? <clears throat> in your words, in your behavior, in the decisions that you make. If I am claiming to be a child of God, is Jesus standing out? He stood out, he stood up. And the verse says, he cried out, come and drink. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled or satisfied. So that was another invitation. <clears throat> so we are looking at the fourth invitation today <clears throat> as we are meditating on that word called come. So today, yet another familiar. I think among all the come series, I think this is the most familiar. We use it many a time. Come to me, all those who are heavy laden or all those who are having burdens. Come to me and I will 
give you rest actually each verse that is Matthew chapter 11 verse 28 29 and 30 each one of them is an invitation in itself <clears throat> and we'll quickly look at it with the limited time that we have each one of them <clears throat> in in the context and and Jesus is talking about <clears throat> people who were burdened back then and people who are burdened now so if we understand just that part of what that burden is that Jesus is referring to, we will know the meaning of what it means to come and lay our burden there. So if you look at that verse again, that is Matthew chapter 11, verse 38. If you look it up once again. Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. In fact, we will have to look at Another passage, just to understand the context, which is in Matthew 23 and verses 1 to 4. If you see this, you will understand what Jesus is referring to. Then Jesus, this is up there for us on the screen. Jesus spoke to the multitudes and to his disciples, saying, The scribes and the Pharisees sit in Moses' seat. Therefore, whatever they tell you to do, tell you to observe, that observe and do, but do not do according to their works, for they say and do not do. And if you see the next one, for they bind what? Tell loudly. Heavy burdens, hard to bear, and lay them on men's shoulders, but they themselves will not move them with one of their. So is it some physical load? No. The content, what is this? Back then, <coughs> Please listen carefully while we are aware of it. That all these Pharisees and teachers of the law broke down those ten commandments into hundreds of other commandments. And for the Jews back then during Jesus' time, it was becoming so difficult to observe each of these rituals. So they had a problem Sitting, they had a problem standing, they had a problem walking, and so on and so forth. That there were so many restrictions, so many things to observe, that people were crumbling under this heavy pressure of meeting the conditions that were laid by these Pharisees. And, and what was advocated is, if you don't do any of this, then you'll never be free of your sin. And it is the whole problem of that guilt that comes because of sin. And they had numerous, numerous small little laws. And they kept adding it to the burden of people. And Jesus as the Lamb of God is now addressing this problem. The whole problem of sin and the guilt associated with sin, he is telling, I am here to take away that burden. So there are three invitations, each of these verses, that is 28, 29, and 30. One invitation is an invitation for liberty. And that's what we are seeing right now. And to follow it up, to back it up, there is an invitation of learning in verse 28. Verse 29, sorry. Come, and learn, that's what he says. What is he telling us to learn? And the third invitation is come and labor. So there are three invitations that we'll look at today. In this very call, come and take rest. Come and I will give you rest. He is talking of rest from these rituals, from observing. And especially in a country like ours, we know most of our non Christian friends, you know how many different rituals that they are involved in how many things that they need to observe and they are so worried and pressurized if there is an eclipse they cannot eat they'll sit indoors and some of us also observe you know safe side we are we are very clever no we want both the word and the world it doesn't work it doesn't work and if you see there are there are so many we call them superstitions, but, but for them it is, it is a belief. And because of, of all of that, if you see, their hearts are burdened. 
their minds are burdened and jesus is talking about both the exhaustion that we will encounter if we are stuck with doing each one of this it is exhaustive it drains a person out and and you don't have strength apart from exhaustion because of these burdens that were laid back then the second thing is the effort part of it yes no if there are 101 conditions that you need to meet how much of effort goes into that right do you agree so there was a lot of effort that people were putting back then most most of the jews and they were exhausted and jesus is looking at them and he says please come come to me for i know that you've been burdened with all of this you've been burdened of doing this doing that keeping up with this condition keeping up with another condition if it is saturday you need to do something if it is monday you need to do something if you committed this sin you need to do something else so on and so forth he has come to fulfill the law and he is telling come but now we are living in the grace period so the story has changed the situation has changed so now god has not called us to keep any one of those from a ceremonial standpoint from a moral standpoint it's still valid but then if you have not come to him and given the burden the biggest burden called the burden of sin which every human being is struggling that is what jesus is calling us today that sin burdens you and you need to come to him there is no other way that you and i can get rid of the burden of sin the load of sin the problems associated with with sin in my life but to come to him and place it there and only by doing that through faith and because of his grace you and i will feel lighter when we transfer this burden because he has paid the price on the cross of calvary so true liberty is available to you and me at the cross of calvary and that is the invitation he is extending to you and me today stilling will you come whatever burden that you're carrying and for all those that is the first part that is a common call a common invitation that the one who paid the price for you and me for the sins of entire mankind is extending to everyone come if you go back to verse 28 again he says come to me all you who labor so this word all not some this invitation is for everyone i thought i think i told in the morning or maybe last sunday evening there are some invitations that we we take it when the person when they either email it to us or come and give us personally we accept them or we read but then we turn turn up on for the on the team and and uh, the one who's invited us are disappointed when when we say you know when we accept the invitation we say ah surely or you're pro- supposing it's somebody's wedding probably somebody at work who's our colleague or one of our near and dear so with a lot of lot of uh, hope and uh, happiness they come and say you know please we want you there they say yeah, yeah yeah i'll come or else we'll try and then we don't turn up i'm sure when they meet us sometime later they'll be very disappointed they'll make it a point to say one thing for sure this is we expected you you didn't come we will have numerous excuses that's that's there that is one part the other 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 type of invitation it is not extend to us but we expect you know if it's a cricket match because cricket is a common thing for everybody and more so if the best of the players are playing in hyderabad we don't want to buy the ticket we want a privilege pass special pass a special invitation and if somebody is crazy about that they'll make every effort to say that can i get one invite to go to this event or somebody is performing or whatever but here is totally different this invitation is extended by the one who created you and me not just this invitation all of those wherever that word come has 
has, has been there in the Bible. Just take it with an open heart. The one, one who has created you, the one who has given us life, who wants to give us life eternal, he is coming to us. And he is telling, come to me. I want to give you something which nobody else can give. Which you and I can, cannot buy. I think I told in the morning, if you have money, you can buy the best of the mattress. 40,000 worth, 1 lakh, whatever, I don't know. But still you can't buy sleep. No? While, while that company will claim, you know, you will have the best of the sleep. No ways. Money can only help you and me buy a mattress, not sleep. Only he has to give us sleep. That proper rest. And when, when, when our hearts and minds are burdened, one is if you have not come to Jesus, then that burden of sin is always there. It keeps paining you and me. And we are disturbed, we are disappointed. But then we know that he has paid the price. Then what is stopping you to come to him and just say, Lord, I give my sinful life to you. <clears throat> just take this burden. <coughs> and most of you have done that. And there are a lot of people here, having given your burden of sin, and God has taken it away, we know it through experience, that was the greatest moment in our lives, we felt so light, and the joy that came that day, you cannot compare it with any other experience, no other experience comes close to that, the day, the moment you and I accepted Jesus as our Savior, God the Holy Spirit has come in, there was joy unlimited. But as you kept following him, as you got on to this daily routine, if you're not growing in that wonderful fellowship, if you've slightly backslidden or somewhere, there are other burdens that keep coming. And we forget that here is my God who took away the greatest burden, the burden of sin and the guilt of sin and the penalty of sin, the power of sin. The presence of sin is there. That will only go when we meet him face to face then why are you not transferring that burden of yours? Because he is telling, I'll give you rest. What is this rest? I'll quickly tell you that. Back then, please remember, Jesus is dead, there were no BPOs, KPOs. <laughs> none, <laughs> these, none of these industries existed. All that people knew was farming and fishing. Nothing more than that. So most of his uh, examples or illustrations or parables were around around that context because people could relate to. And 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 the deeper truth here is that that word rest, the way it was written in the original Greek language, I believe, because I do a lot of reference check and, and commentaries and and all of that, just to ensure that we get to the core of the context the pure word and all that surrounds the beauty of digging deeper into his word. They say that the context is a farmer's context. A farmer who's worked hard, goes about plowing the field and, and, plant and, and sows the seed. And after all that labor, now the farmer is sitting, taking rest. For what? For that seed to take shape, to become a plant, and to give harvest or yield. And that the Lord does. And that is what he is referring to. He's telling, you are, you are so burdened, either with the guilt of sin, or that guilt is gone, but there is something else. It could be the pressure of work. It should be the pressure of, of something personal, your health, or, or, or money, or, or, or some relationship. I don't know what it is. If you're struggling, God is telling, just come to me and give it up to me. I am there to carry that burden of yours. And he is telling, I'll give you rest. That means you will be able to see the fruit of transferring it to me and I will take care. True liberty is only available at the cross when we transfer our load to him. And he says, 
and I will give you rest. We saw that. So, th so that verse, this invitation here, come to me, is come and I will what? Liberate you. I will give you freedom. Whatever burden and load that you are carrying, under which you are feeling the stress and the strain of carrying that load. And I think I told this illustration numerous times, uh, a very crude, but a simple illustration of how some people, you know, don't transfer their load or burden. It is about this guy who had a heavy bag on his back and he was standing on a highway wanting to hitchhike, take a lift from one place to another. So he's standing there and waving for vehicles to stop. Nobody was stopping. Finally, there was this one truck. This truck driver stopped and he kind of told him to get on to that truck. So he, he has this bag, so he gets on, that whole truck is empty at the back side, and he is standing there. Th obviously, the truck driver is moving on, and he sees through that rear mirror, and this fellow is standing like this with his bag. So he kind of cautions him, and he says that, why are you, you know, standing, and now you got onto the truck, there is no problem, keep your bag aside, relax, and I'll drop you at your destination. And this guy replies back, and he says, you are, your vehicle is already carrying me. Let me carry the bag. <laughs> that is how we are. Lord, you have taken away the guilt of my sin. Other family problems, uh, boss problems. You know. How many problems will you solve, Lord? It's okay, you are taking me to heaven. That's more than enough. Rest I will take care. <laughs> no. You have this beautiful privilege to give it to him. Cast all your care on him. Cast all your care, all your concerns, all your worries, whatever it is, however trivial they may seem, however small they may seem, you and I cannot handle, we don't have that wisdom, we will further mess it up, it is best to transfer because we have this greatest invitation. An invitation that will liberate us from the burden not only of our sin, but our self-made problems. And you and I have to experience it each day of our lives. Just come to him, pour out your heart and say, Lord, here it is, please take it. <clears throat> so it's an invitation of liberation or liberty. And verse 29, which is an extension of, of that verse, verse 29 says, Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find again what? Rest. So this is an invitation of learning. <coughs> a disciple of Lord Jesus Christ. The meaning of a disciple is somebody who learns. He's a student. And God expects us to sit at his feet. And unless you first transfer your burden, you will not be ready to listen and, and get into that complete rest of resting on him, resting on his promises, resting on his word, which is practical. That can only happen when I first I ask God to take this burden off and make me feel light. And that is the core. So it is not only an, an invitation for liberty, it's an invitation for me to learn. Why? It says, that I am gentle and lowly. One commentator said, these two qualities, one is being gentle is being helpful. That was the meaning, I believe. Come and learn from me because I am there to what? Help. The greatest tutor, best one-on-one -on -one coach. These days they're talking about life coaches. Have you heard that word? If not life coach, coaching and mentoring, I'm sure this has been talked about so much. Whether they coach or mentor only, God knows. But this is used from a HR standpoint, an operation standpoint, because I'm still at work. So for anything, we give this solution. I think you need a coach. I think you need a mentor. <laughs> so spend some time, take some feedback, you know. 
and here god is willing to coach you and me <clears throat> he says come and learn because what i am gentle that means i am helpful and the next one is lowly in heart is i am humble what a quality that our lord has he is helpful he is humble somebody who is most learned you rarely find them to be humble there will be some people i'm not telling i'm not generalizing but most of them who are highly qualified they say they have a chip on the shoulder right <laughs> i'm not picking on anyone there are some people with the best of the qualifications and even at the highest level they are humble there there are people like that but 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 if you see majority of them they are somewhere there <laughs> it's very difficult to meet such people and the more qualified a person is the more costly it is to take advice from them the other day i i, I met a law firm not not because of the church huh? <laughs> because of the work that i do uh, <clears throat> so our organization was wanting to tie up with a law firm and they helped us in one agreement just in the past it was it was a simple agreement that they had they need to you know kind of pen it down and give it to us because we were working we were working on something i didn't even know that uh, our, our my boss back in the us was doing the after that agreement was done and all but to be executed we said no no these are those guys who helped us in this agreement and um, i want you to meet them so that we can we can have a tie up with them i said okay fine i had a conversation with them they 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 went back and the head of finance comes up to me and he said why are these people here so we are we wanting to have a contract with them and he said with these people do you know how costly they are yeah i know i know they are pretty expensive they are they are those one of those best law firms and a global law firm he said we received the bill of that agreement that they did and how much was it he gave me a number i said wow it was couple of lakhs and all that they did is they spent some 3 4 hours <laughs> and it was a standard agreement so wh- why did i bring it up here is because they claim to be one of the best or the kind of knowledge that they carry because we reached out there are so many other lawyers who pra- in hyderabad who could have given us the same draft which was equally valid in the court of law if we end up into into some problem and they would have probably charged us some 10 20000 rupees i don't know but then as they say you know depending on what you pay that kind of quality you get yes no right so the more credible the person is the more qualified the person is the more costly it is and they don't have as much time for them the time is precious if they spend they charge you by the hour but here our god is telling 24 7 i am available that's why we go to him at the last <laughs> because he is available and on top of it it's free consultation charge is free 24/7 available. Even while I am sleeping, I say, "Lord, <laughs> please help me." Huh? And we know He will hear. I mean, we have taken Him for for granted. We we don't even value. You know that is the tragedy. We don't even value what kind of access we have. This access, which is not there for everybody, only those who are saved, who are washed in the blood of Jesus Christ, can come to the Father through Him. right wow and to learn from the savior from the one who gave you life the one who knows you inside out the one who has seen you when you are a lump of flesh in your mother's womb who else is the best advisor tell me who can help us understand our shortcomings and weakness so please each day come to him and say lord i want to learn and you can only learn when you sit peacefully <laughs> you cannot keep doing two three things and say lord teach me right yes no when you are sitting with him that time is exclusive <clears throat> that teacher wants that complete attention from their students and if it is one to one it becomes even more important that i pay that complete attention to god and he is helpful that is these are those qualities according to this verse he is helpful and he is humble 
humble to teach you his ways, his word, the way he works. So that is the second day invitation. The third one, with that we close. Verse 30. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. An invitation to labor. You have been laboring, but he says, transfer your burden to me and I will partner with you. And to take up his yoke and to partner with him and to walk this Christian life, this Christian walk, it is not that it is free of burden. There is burden, but it is light because of whom we are partnering with. Amen? Because he is there. He is helping me. He cares for me. He is taking my burden of sin and shame and my struggles and I am sitting at his feet at learning and as I continue to learn, I take up his yoke I take up his work, I understand his will, and he is with me, and we keep walking in sync, in respect of whatever it is, you and I will feel light. There is no doubt. <clears throat> I'm telling out of my day-to-day -day experience. Monday to Friday I work, like most of you, and if there are anything in between, I come to those midweeks at times. Saturday I sit and prepare. Sunday morning, two services, sometimes in the afternoon, then evening, and all of this. But this seems so light in comparison to at work when I go back tomorrow. <laughs> Even though there is, there is a big team who will help and all of that, but still, <coughs> Not that it is physical work, right? It is mental work. You know, something may come up and then you are out there to explain and do whatever. That is, that is part of our, our work. Invariably, there is some amount of stress and we need God's help. But when you give preference to Him and say, Lord, wherever you planted me, I will take it as my place for you to be honored. I need your help even to do that work. And that becomes lighter. But the work that we do for the Lord is even more light because of his promise. So laboring for him and laboring with him is the greatest privilege. And say, Lord, I am willing to take up your yoke. And he's wanting his children to come and partner. The harvest is plenty, but the laborers are few. God is very clear. Huh? When he gave his word, each, each of those words were very thoughtfully written. As prompted by God the Holy Spirit. I am glad he didn't say, for the harvest is plenty and the supervisors are few. There would have been so many, because everybody wants to supervise, no? Even back at work, even here. Manager position, I will come. No, entry level, ah, no, sir. <laughs> so God was clear. He's, he said, I am the only supervisor. <laughs> I am the boss. Rest all are laborers. <laughs> but his yoke is what? Easy. And his burden is light. Working for the Lord, living a Christian life, has burden. But it is light because of who he is and for he being our partner. Yet another invitation today. Invitation to come. Don't discredit this invitation. Don't throw away this invitation. These are those best invitations that anybody can receive. 
And today God has invited you all over again. For us to be liberated, for us to learn, and for us to labor with Him. Let us pray. Take a moment to introspect your life in the light of what you and I have heard. Familiar passages. Some of these verses, we know them by heart because we've been singing about these verses. We've been learning right from our Sunday school days probably if you're born Christians. But today, God has spoken to us all over again as He always does. So do you want to come and ask God to take away that guilt of sin, that load of sin that you've been carrying, you lay it at his feet for he paid the price and say, Lord, take my sin away. And for most of you who have done that, if you are struggling with some other burden, lay it at his feet. If it is work stress, if it is family relationship, if it is health, if it is money, whatever it is, you say, Lord, I give it to you. And I want to take up your yoke. I want to partner with you. For you are helpful, you are humble. And I will have real rest. Commit yourself all over again. Gracious God, we thank you for giving us your word as you always do. What a joy, O God, to receive an invitation from you. And this is for all of us. May we never ever throw away anything that you give us. May we not neglect the beautiful offer of coming to you and giving ourselves completely to you. In Jesus' name I pray.